Merlot is one of the most commonly planted red grapes, and it's capable of producing some of the world's greatest wine. The grape was riding a wave in the 90s until its reputation took a hit thanks to a little film. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! Thanks to sideways and oceans of cheap, thin, watery Merlots. Dirty, soiled grape juice flavor. Not really the best nose I've ever come across. I don't think the grape gets credit for how truly great it can be. We're going to taste the difference between cheap, mid-range, and expensive Merlots in this video. When I started drinking wine, I have to admit, I was influenced by the film Sideways too. But I was also drinking a lot of cheap supermarket Merlots. And I want to show you the difference between these cheap wines and more expensive wines. Hopefully this blind tasting will prove my point. I don't look stupid. <laughs> When I'm blind tasting for price, I'm looking for three factors. I'm looking for complexity. Do the wines taste a little bit more than just fruit? Do they taste more than quote unquote just wine? I'm looking for a little bit of richness. The difference between skim and whole milk. Whole milk is going to feel a little full, a little richer. So the more expensive wine should feel a little bit more full. And then last one is length. How long does that wine stay on the palate? Merlot is a grape from Bordeaux, France. And it gets its name after a bird that commonly like to snack on it. It's the second most planted red wine grape in the world, right behind Cabernet Sauvignon. High quality Merlots tend to be fruity, have this nice plush mouthfeel, more plum-like flavors, black cherry. I even associate graphite, pencil lead saving type of flavors with high quality Merlot. Some of my favorite areas in the world for great Merlot are Napa and Sonoma County in California, Washington State, Friuli Venezia Giulia in Italy, and of course the right bank of Bordeaux, it's motherland. A good thing about this grape too is it's planted all over the world. I've tasted some absolutely delicious Merlots from South Africa, Australia, even New Zealand, and all over Europe. Everywhere from obscure countries like Moldova, Romania, Serbia, all the way to France, Italy, Spain, and even Portugal. I have to admit, I know what all three wines are, I just don't know the order. The cheapest and the most expensive wine I've never tasted before, and the mid-range wine I haven't tasted this vintage. Let me take a look at the color on all three wines. It's so funny, just based on color, I don't think I would be able to tell the cheap, expensive, and mid-range wine. One is slightly darker than the other two. Wine number one. This has exactly what I would expect in a barrel aged Merlot. I think this is aged in the barrel. I don't think this is the cheapest wine, just on, just on nose alone. If it is the cheapest wine, I would be actually really impressed. Notes of red plum, chocolate even, black cherry. Maybe a little bit of baking spice. Smells really good. Doesn't have that graphite note, that I'm that shade pencil flavor that I'm looking for in higher quality Merlots, though. This is what I like about Merlot. It's plush, full-bodied, round up front. It's tangy. There's some nice acidity. There are some tannins. I want some tannin in my red wine. But doesn't it doesn't strip my mouth of saliva. It doesn't make me go... I have to say, if this is the cheap Merlot, I would be very, very impressed. This first wine is quite long, too. That's why I don't think it's the cheapest. Let's move on to number two. Number two, I would bet, I would bet my life on is the cheap wine. It really just smells like candy, like a candy cherry. I know this sounds weird in red wine, but it almost smells like this, like, fake sweet peach juice, too. No complexity at all, just sweet fruit. The wine disappears completely on the palate, left with just some tannin. I'm just... Left with some drying sensation, no complexity, completely boring flavor. I've had some good cheap red wines before, but this honestly is not good. This tastes like the kind of stuff that, that maybe college kids are mixing with Coca-Cola. I don't think this is good at all. Number two, I definitely think it's the cheap wine. If it's the mid-range wine, I'm gonna or the expensive wine, I'm gonna go berserk on it on the producer. Wine number three. This was the darkest out of the three, so maybe. It's the most expensive, very complex. This has some black olive type of flavors, some almost bacon fat, some really high quality wood going on. Black cherry, a lot of mineral notes, even uh, some earthiness. Nice, I could just smell this. This is the type of red wine I like to just smell. When I'm looking for high quality red wines, white wines, what I'm looking for is the mid palate to have this explosion of flavor. The front palate is great when you put the wine in your mouth. A lot of cheap wines have this explosion of fruit and then just disappear. Really high quality wines have nice fruit up front, but then as you drink through the wine, the flavors kind of explode and then stay long. That's what this wine has. This is really good stuff. Chewy tannins. There's so many, so many earthy notes. There are some of those graphite pencil note shaving things I'm looking for, but it's not like they stick out all over the place. They really come together. They're quite complete and it's dense. It's the most full-bodied out of the three. Let me compare it to the mid-range and the cheap wine again. 
Yeah, after tasting wine three and then going back to wine number one, wine three is the biggest. So let's see if I got it right. What I thought was the cheapest was wine number two. Let's take a look and see what it is, shall we? This is the Felix Solis Avantis Contenda Merlot 2020 from Spain. This was $2.90. I've had a lot of cheap wines in my day that were pretty good. This was not good at all. I don't think I would even cook with this. Not very good at all. The wine that I thought was the mid-range wine was wine number one here. If it is what I think it is, I've had it before, just not, I don't think I've had this vintage. Aha! This is the Krauthacker Merlot 2017. This is from Croatia. This wine in Croatia is 15 US dollars. To me, it drinks more like a wine that's probably in the US gonna be 20, 25, maybe 27 dollars. I think this is really good, super enjoyable. This to me is what good quality varietal Merlot wine should taste like. It has that red plum, that black cherry type flavor, it has a little bit of mocha from the chocolate. This is just really, just good Merlot. The one that I thought was most expensive, this is the Couvent de Jacobin. Grand Cru Classe Centimillion Grand Cru 2015. I'm gonna have some more of this wine. Really good. 45 US dollars. Look, I know that $45 is not cheap, but I think this wine, if you wanna taste high quality Merlot, this is something, this is 85% Merlot, 11% Cabernet Franc, 4% Petit Verdot. In Europe, technically, if a wine is made up of 85% of a grape, you could, this could technically be labeled as just Merlot. In the US, it only has to be 75%. I think this tasting showed what I what I thought it would show is this is the type of Merlot, these are the type of wines that I think people are drinking and it gives Merlot a bad rap, whereas you step it up and you can get wine that is of much, much higher quality. Well, some of the greatest Merlots or Merlot-based wines that I've ever had include the Honata Felix, the Duckhorn Three Palm Vineyards Merlot, the Miani Bordi Merlot from Italy, and the Chateau Cheval Blanc from Bordeaux. My recommendations if you're going for a Merlot, especially in the US, just get out of the supermarket Market. Look for ones that are maybe priced in the $20, $25 and up range. Again, this is from Bordeaux. If you want to drink the most bang for your buck, high quality Merlots, I would look at wines that are labeled Saint Emilion, uh, Fronsac, also uh, La Landa Pomerol, Pomerol. Of course, some of these wines can get into the hundreds, even thousands of dollars, but I think in the $30 to $50 range, you can find a lot of value, which, which this wine is here. The great thing about Merlots too is they're, they're usually priced a little bit less than Cabernet Sauvignon. They're wines that go great with steak, great with red meats. So I'd love to know, do you like the great Merlot? Do you have any favorite producers, favorite regions, favorite gems? Drop it in the comments below. And if you're thinking about what to watch next, I'm going to throw something up here that you absolutely would love. Thanks for watching. Cheers.